I painted this view of Andy Warhol numerous times in the past. This time I wanted to use an old tube of mineral turquoise watercolor paint and my trusty chalk marker pens. So, as you can see here, I'm applying just clean, clear water to Andy's sunglasses. Love, love working wet on wet. What better thing to do with watercolor paint? And of course I'm using, oh, about one or two blues. Here I'm trying to get the look of reflection or reflections in each one of those lenses. But as you're painting, you're often making aesthetic decisions on the go. And here I decided just to keep the lenses very, very simple and dark. Now I'm applying or painting in some warm colors on Andy Warhol's face. Not only do I like painting wet on wet, but I also have a little water spritzer bottle. So I'll apply paint and then spritz that paint and watch it move around and do its thing again, only as beautifully as watercolor paint can do it. Get ready, it's coming. Time to use my spray bottle. And not to worry, the spray bottle's coming back shortly. So as she blows, the spray bottle's back. I gotta tell you, I just love doing this. Look at that flow, look at the colors mixing. This is watercolor. It's all about controlling the flood. And of course, portraiture is all about rendering the human face. So now I start on the chin and getting that jawline to come into view. And a bit of this collar and shoulder. Some more washes of the mineral turquoise. A few subtle splatters. And some not so subtle splatters, some warm colors in the lips. And in the nose area. Now for the background colors to bring out Warhol's white spiky hair. And as you can see here, I'm using a flat watercolor brush. So I can use that very edge of the brush and move it laterally, vertically, horizontal to get that spiky effect. And then I use the side of the brush to push down for the larger areas, the background areas that are going away from the spikes of his hair. Now I'm washing in some more of that iridescent, metallic, turquoise color. I love this color, and it's got a nice sheen to it. More warm colors in the light area, the right side of Warhol's face. It's interesting how these little areas of warm color really do bring life and energy into Andy's face. A little more of that mineral turquoise and some more subtle splatters in the background on the right side. Ah, more subtle details, but these subtle details can really make or break a portrait. They're very important.
almost at the finish line, except I want to separate his upper lip and lower lip more dramatically. And you do that with a darker value where the lips meet. And here comes a chalk marker. Chalk markers are great for highlight colors and to bring back the white of the paper. And they're filled up with a gouache-like liquid, so gouache is watercolor. Now I'm back with a flat brush again to lay in some more of that iridescent, beautiful iridescent turquoise color. A honking big mega white chalk marker and I'm going to use that to get more white into Andy's hair. Oftentimes you have to let an area of white dry because it's still going to be a little transparent and you're going to see the color underneath. But let it dry. I put another layer on top and voila I'm back to pure white. Like I said, as an artist is painting, we have to think on our feet. So I've decided I need to bring down that dark background on the left side just a little bit more. One more layer of the mineral turquoise. I really want to create a nice sheen. Now I'm using my colored chalk markers for some final warm areas across Andy Warhol's face. So here's the painting and I'm thinking that maybe it is finished, but no. I think the glasses have to be dramatically a lot darker with no reflections. Like I've said several times, artists just have to think on their feet as they're painting. Voila! My Andy Warhol painting is finally finished.